asked uh, Trey and Sam kind of the same thing, but through the first 13 games of the season, what, what stood out to you just about this team? And does it feel like maybe the defense is becoming the identity for this team? Yeah, what, what, what stands out is that um, there's, there's a push with these guys to get better. There's a push to these guys to um, defend. Um, and on all aspects, I think that these guys, have, uh, they play hard. We're getting our athleticism into the game. Um, but there's, a, there's, this re, there's this mentality of a of, of push to get better. And that's what you're going to need in this league. There's going to be ups and downs in this journey. And uh, you just got to be pushing to get better, learn from what doesn't go your way. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the things that I've learned from this team is, is that, you know, this, we're, the things we set out to be longer and more athletic um, to impact the game is, is moving in that right direction. I think defensively we're better. I just think we cover more ground. Um, we can do some different things. I think offensively we're playing at a, a, a much higher pace. Um, so, you know, and they've, they've, they have, and also I'll be honest, no matter who our opponent is, I think we've come out ready to play every game. You know, didn't always play great, but you never said, oh, they took it lightly or they didn't come out ready to play. We've been ready to play and play hard for 13 games. And that, that, that's what I love about this group. When you feel like you're finding a rhythm again, you had Carolina a week off and then two and then another week off, and things feel like they're getting back to normal. Yeah, you know, you're getting your legs back. You know, you're getting your Christmas slough off. Um, you know, I, I do. I think, I think the Monmouth game, we, we played um, more like we can play. Um, and with that said, I still feel like that. I think we've had great practices. So to answer your question, yes, there, there's unequivocally a little bit of, uh, yeah, coming off from Christmas. Anytime you take five days off, there's no other point in the season where you take five days off. It won't happen again, and it's just, it's just different. We'll talk about Iowa State's defense here in a second, but offensively, what, what do you see from them as far as being able to attack you guys? Pace. They run, at, they, they cut, and they run their offense at an, an unprecedented pace. They have phenomenal. It's incredible because people, that's what you do when you talk about Iowa State. You talk about how hard they play, they force turnovers, how good defensively, how well coached, connected they are defensively. And so those are all things you say about Iowa State, and they're true as ever with this year's team, number two in all those categories. But the thing that, that, that you, if, when you watch Iowa State is, they run their offense with a phenomenal pace. They cut, they move, they share, they drive, they pass at a high, high, you have to be ready for the pace in which they run their offense. Well, because you're playing pace, aren't you better ready to play a team like that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that. So the pace is not only in transition with them, the pace is on the half court offense. I mean, they're cutting. They're going side to side to side to side. I mean, they're, they're, they're cutting with tremendous pace. And you've got to be ready to stay fresh to guard that because they're very good. I mean, they have two guys averaging six assists. That's phenomenal um, when you've got two guys averaging that many assists. That means they're sharing it, moving it. I mean, you've got to stay fresh uh, guarding, their, guarding their pace. They also look like they're balanced in scoring. Four they they four are. guys in double figures. So. I mean, Lipsy is a one of the top improved players in the nation, not just the Big 12. Um, you know, Gilbert gives you 15 a game. You know, I, I have a, um, a lot of the freshmen can really shoot. Um, but he also can drive and post you up. He's got, you know, he's got that Dirk move where he can jump over you. He's got tremendous space when he gets that move going. Um, I know they call him Rob Energy. I, I, he's one of my favorite players just because he, he brings what he brings every single night. Um, they're big. Um, they got, <clears throat> you know, Jones, a transfer from Buffalo, is a very good player. Um, you know, they just they, they come at you a, a lot of different ways to score. Um, and I think that's, that's part of it. They have no problem sharing the ball. They share it as good as anybody. You, you mentioned the things that you've learned about this team. Is there anything that surprised you about this team so far this year, given how many new faces? And... Um, I wouldn't say surprised, no. This is what we, we, we expected when we were we recruited to this, and this is what we, our standards have been to this. So we've, we've and um, um, so nothing's really surprised me. No, this is, it's, it's, uh, we've, we've got to get better. And, um, but I, I really enjoy how hard these guys are, are practicing every day to get better. You so talk successfully recruited a roster that's panned out that had the length, the athleticism that you wanted to add. 
how much better does that equip you guys to go in the big 12 play where that's got to be what that was at least partially about it is i mean when, when you're playing you know 18 or 19 of these games in a row at the most the highest level you know night in night out you're you, you've got to have some athleticism and length to compete against that night in night out you're going to get some wins like we, we did some good things over you know but like you to do it every night you you need more athleticism more length to do what you do you know i'm not changing what we do we still are fundamentally doing what we do defensively we still are trying to do space what i love is we're doing a little bit more pace in space what i love is we're getting a little more length than what we do defensively so i just think it's better as equipped us to go into the number one basketball league in the country 19 games in a row kind of the conference tournament minimum you gotta do this 19 games in a row of the highest level, it, it wears on you if you're out athletic and out length every single night. And I think we're, we're, we've shrunk that gap. We talked a lot after the North Carolina game about you play an elite defensive team, you have to keep the ball moving. Not that you don't want that every week, but do you reemphasize that a lot going into face an elite defensive team like this? But we got to take care of the thing. The lesson we, we can't have that game go in vain, that loss go in vain, is we had 18 turnovers. We had 18 turnovers and it was two possession game, two minutes left to go. I mean, do the math. I mean, we're, we're, we're one of the, we're upper top 30 offense efficiency teams. We're scoring over one point per possession. So you cut off, you know, six or seven of those turnovers. Now, instead of two minutes, you're up. If we're, we're, if we're analytically doing what we're doing. So that is such a key. That game of North Carolina, that, that lessons learned with the turnovers and not taking care of it going too deep and having them dig and rake. Now we're playing the team that does that the best. I don't know if there's a team in the country that, that takes turnovers and scores and forces you to turn over better than Iowa State. That's, that's what they do. They turn you over and turn it into baskets. And we've got to, we're going to have some, but you, you, we can't have, we've got to learn from that game um, from Carolina. And you know, what is that balance, maybe, with the pace that you want to play, knowing that you know turnovers can go up the, the faster you play, but also you know wanting to, to value the ball strong. You got to eliminate the ones that are out of carelessness, being too sped up. There's, there's Coach Materis, I think you've heard me quote this. There's turnovers out of commission, and you're really trying to do the right thing, man. It's the right play, you just turn it over. All right. And then there's turnovers out of omission. You, you you omit your toughness. You omit your IQ. You omit your fundamentals. You know, those are the ones you got to omit. You know, but we're going to have one. We go on a fast break, we throw it ahead. I mean, it goes off the guy's hands. And I mean, we were trying to make the right play. There's a difference between the turnover we had at the end of the Monmouth game where we just soft and bobbled it and it got stolen and they hit a three. We got we, we to have, if we're going to have turnovers, it got to be a commission um, doing, trying to make the right play, not omitting our fundamentals, our toughness, or IQ. You're an older team now. You think that's going to help a lot? Heck yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, we got guys coming off the bench that's been at high major levels that have played in front of big crowds, that have played with stake at stakes. So sometimes when you come off the bench and you're super, super young or inexperienced, you know, but our guys off the bench, you know, and then you look at the guys that are in the first eight. I mean, Tegan Lose went through this last year. Sam went through it last year. And, you know, Jalen Moore went through the ACC, you know. Um, and, and Jay Beyond has is, is been terrific. So, like, experience does definitely help. It definitely helps. But I will say this about it isn't the end-all answer because the bottom line is there's nothing like going through the grind we're about to go through. It, it, it's, it's the best of the best every single night, and you've got to be ready every single night. Sam talked about one through eight, kind of everybody's accepted their role on this team, how, how that's kind of helped with the chemistry and everything. How, how does Jalen fit into that? You know what Jalen's done is Jalen's done a great job of, um, of getting better at, at who he is. You know, we talked a couple times that like North Carolina tried to do a couple things that, and he was going too deep. Next couple games, like last game, he stopped before the plug, kicked it, kicked it. Like that's growth. Jalen's really accepted coaching, you know, and, um, you know, he's, he's let the game come to him. And this is such a lesson for anybody at any level. When your mind's right, your game's right. Jalen has kept his mind right. You know, he's, he's, there's times where he's been frustrated. There's times we've got on him. And he's, if, if you look at his body language, if you look at his energy level, it's always high. 
So it's, you know, we have this quote, and the guys will know they've heard it. You know, how you think is how you feel. How you feel is how you act, and how you act defines you. And it starts with how you think. And Jalen's got this positive energy. Whether you're on him and trying to correct him, he's like, okay, I'm trying to address that. I'm trying to get better at that. That's how he thinks. And that's how he feels. When you sit there and think, man, coach is on me. Coach is, is criticizing me. He doesn't think I can do this. That's how I feel. And when I'm feeling that way, I'm walking around feeling, you know, like that way. And that's how I act. And that's how your teammates and your coaches perceive you. And Jalen is the definition of that, my favorite quote. He's the definition of, you know, of taking coaching and addressing like, man, all right, doesn't think coach, doesn't think I can put the ball in the deck. Be smarter. If they start coming, digging and raking, I got to pick it up. Doesn't mean coach thinks don't dribble. You know, and that's what that's what I think of when I think of Jalen Hills more, Jalen Moore going this way. Thanks. Any I hope we post that out there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's something to post for all young people right there. Cool. Anything else?